Okay, in this video, we'll look at three camera blocking techniques from The Expanse. First, one shot that's excellent blocking technique, but totally overdone. And then two very subtle panning techniques we should all be using a lot more. This is Hot Moves. So I'm really torn about this first shot, because on the one hand, it's very clever blocking by director Thor Freudenthal, I hope I'm saying that right, because he really went for it when blocking this scene. But it also totally breaks the fourth wall by showing the filmmaking that went into it, which is exactly what The Expanse is so good at not doing. Do you work for Dr. Strickland? No, we work together. So the thing we're really talking about is the blocking around these pouches. They work together to help people and stop Count Mungo. It's my favorite cartoon. And then it cuts into over-the-shoulder dialogue. So as much as I love clever blocking like this, it calls a ton of attention to itself, and I don't think that's right for The Expanse. Especially because this scene is really dark, because they're doing some bad things to these children, and they're pretending it's all happy fun. And then it, I feel like it's kind of a sitcom or kind of a campy technique that's being used here. So let's look at how it's done. I didn't draw in any of the extras because uh, I just drew one here to kind of make the point because there's extras like buzzing all over and also it's, the, it's an extra that's removing the saline pouches down here. That's the kind of stuff we would just dial in at the very end. So then uh, basically they walk, uh, they walk into the scene behind this middle wall here which is a very like, nice perspective change. And if we just look at that again, here first we track behind that wall. That's an awesome perspective shift. And then they end up right here with her hidden behind the second pouch. And then an extra comes in and removes the pouch. And then she steps over to her next mark, like this. And so basically, uh, the man steps into the gap left behind from when we removed the, the first pouch. And then somebody steps in and removes the second pouch. Um, so <laughs> that's, uh, that's one hell of a blocking. And then there's a tiny detail that's not super obvious, which is that in the beginning they're moving horizontally. And that means that the dolly would just be matching their speed. But once they start moving towards the camera, their horizontal speed actually slows down a lot. And so the dolly grip has to slow down right about here. Okay, next up is a handoff. And this is a technique that was all the rage in the 70s. And then people for some reason stopped doing it as much, which is weird and a pity. Um, but let's watch the shot with a little bit of scene context. Trip the switch. Well, out here is our home, not theirs. So it's coming up right now. So a handoff is simply that you follow one thing, and then when you pass by another thing, you stop on that. And here we're using it for a reaction. So it's a mystery to me why people don't do handoffs all the time, because it's the perfect reaction shot. Basically, anytime somebody walks out of a scene, and let's face it, that happens all day long, we should just pan with them and then stop on someone else. And it's bam, instant reaction shot. Handoffs are actually not totally easy to operate, because while you're panning, you can't just hit a wall at the end. You have to start breaking before you hit the end. And basically, you have to start thinking about the second actor before they're visible and let the first actor start drifting. One little interesting detail is that even though he walks behind her, she turns towards the camera. And that creates an interesting private moment. And they were actually forced to do it like this because we'd lose her face if she turned with him. So instead she turns towards the camera. But that's an awesome bonus, a small extra character beat. And finally in this video, let's look at a very subtle reframing technique. We'll just watch the clip starting one edit before and then we'll talk about it afterwards. I'll be right there. Bring them to me and do not let anyone stop you. Yeah, boss man. So a reframe is a single shot that repurposes itself between two different configurations. And this shot goes between being a single shot on him to an over the shoulder with the guy in the background, and then back to being a single shot on the guy in the foreground. And this technique is so subtle that it looks like almost nothing in the camera diagram. So because basically here he's in a single shot, then the actor turns and we pan to the right and now it's an over the shoulder, and then back again. 
So we're hitting a problem that's inherent to all camera diagrams, which is that they're not very good at showing small movements. And unless you really know what you're going for, you're probably going to forget to do this technique. The best way, in my opinion, to set up this shot is to first frame it for the over the shoulder, because that involves two people, and it needs much more dialing in. And then afterwards, you go back and frame the, frame the single shot. And this is easier to do if the actor, the guy right here, if he also takes a step backwards or at least shifts his weight because then visually he separates himself from the guy in the background. So if he like takes just a quarter step backwards, it's because then when we go back and forth, then we get a clean single and then into an over the shoulder and then back into a clean single. The rest is just panning and racking focus. This is awesome camera vocabulary that all of us should be using a lot more.